Okay, now in this video, I'm going to teach you how to know the derivative of trigonometric functions, okay, and how to remember them as well. Now, you do not even need to know how to code them, all right? But all you just need to know is this function, okay, what is the derivative? You can just say immediately. For example, if I ask you now, what is the derivative of tangent x? Mm, the derivative of tangent, tangent is it secant, secant, you see? It may take a little time or you may not even get it right. So at the end of this video, all that will happen again, all right? So I'm going to teach you what you need to know, okay? Just considering these three things, these three things here, these three tools, call it, they are going to help you a lot, all right? And then whenever you're given a function to differentiate and it's a trigonometric function like this, you can just tell the derivative without even having to cram, okay? Or without even thinking about it. Okay, great. Okay, so let's just call the derivative of these functions, or maybe let's just call the functions out for you to know. This is the sine, okay? This is sine x, cosine x, tangent x, cotangent x, secant x, and cosecant x. Maybe if I call that again, sine x, the next thing is cosine x, tangent x, the next thing is cotangent x, secant x, the next thing is cosecant x. So you can imagine when you hear sine, the next thing is cosine, you hear tangent, the next thing is cotangent, and so on like that. So what, why the sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant, why the co? Okay, after mentioning a certain function, the next one has a co with it. Well, that is what we mean by the co-functions. Now, what do you really mean by co-functions? Well, let me just give you a little um, definition for that. Please go ahead and subscribe to my channel, all right? I believe you like this video and it's actually helpful as well. So you press the subscribe button and turn on notifications. It's actually free to do that. Okay, so in this context of trigonometric function, we have that co-functions, okay, are functions that have the same value at complementary angles. So I've brought in another word here, what we mean by complementary angles, all right? Well, that's not too difficult. Now, two angles are said to be complementary angles if the sum of those two angles gives us 90 degrees. For example, if, um, if alpha plus beta, okay, let's say alpha and beta are, are angles, all right? If the sum of those two gives us 90 degrees, okay, then we can say that alpha and beta are called complementary angles, all right? Good. So they are complementary angles if the sum of the two angles gives us 90 degree. Good. So that right there tells us that sine and cosine are complementary are co-functions because sine of an angle gives us the cosine of the other angle if those two angles are complementary angles. Now, for example, 60 plus 30 degrees will give us 90 degrees, all right? That means 60 and 30 are complementary angles, which means that sine of 60 degrees is the same thing as cosine of 30 degrees because sine and cosine are cofunctions, all right? These are complementary angles. The value of this is the same thing as the value of the cosine of the other part of the uh, angle. Good. So that is what we mean by cofunctions, all right? When they act on co when they act on complementary angles and then the value gives us the same thing. Good. So look at tangent and cotangent. So this, and these two are, co are co functions because tangent of an angle is the same thing as cotangent of the other angle. Okay. Take note, those two angles you are talking about here are complementary angles. For example, tangent of 60 degrees is the same thing as cotangent of 30 degrees, right? Or you can say tangent of 45 degrees would be the same thing as cotangent of 45 degrees. Good. Secant and cosecant, they also work the same way. So when you have some of two angles giving you 90 degrees, then secant of one of the angles will be the same thing as cosecant of the other. Good. So that is what we mean by co-functions, all right? Very simple, all right? Good. So this right here will actually help us in maybe just to get, just to make you to, um, get familiar with the terms or the names of these functions, the trigonometric functions, I mean. That is the sine, cosine, tangent, cos cotangent, secant, and then cosecant. Great. Okay. Another thing you should notice is this. Let me call this out again for you one more time. And in this case, I'm going to be talking about the derivatives. This is sine x. The next thing, the derivative is cosecant. Um, this is sine x. The derivative is cosine x. This is cosine x. The derivative is minus sine x. This is cotangent of x. The derivative is minus cosecant squared. This is cosecant. The derivative is minus cosecant cotangent. What you want to observe there, what I want you to observe there is this. Whenever we have the fun a function and it has co, all right, just starting with the C, what does it have? The derivative will be negative. This is cotangent. It has a negative derivative. And this is cosecant, all right? Maybe we don't show the O, but cosecant. It has a negative derivative as well. So that tells us 
easily that whenever we have a function that is starting with the co, okay, a trigonometry function in this case, then it will have a negative derivative. So if I just ask you, what's the derivative of cosecant x? Anyway, you may not know what the function part is, but you know that it has a negative derivative, all right? Cosecant, it has a negative derivative. That's it for negative derivatives. Good. So the last thing we want to consider here is what, we term, what I call relationships. Hmm. Anyway, the derivatives, okay, to, to identify the function part, after knowing the sign that it will give you, to identify the function part, we need to look at the relationships, right, between a function and its derivative. Good. Okay, so we have the function here, trigonometry function sine x. The derivative is cosine x. So you can see that the derivative of sine is its co-function, which is cosine, right? Great. And then the derivative of cosine gives us sine. But here, because we have cosine starting with the co, what do we have here? It, it has a negative derivative. So you notice that sine and cosine will always go together, right? They will always go together, right? So they are friends, okay? So the relationship, they, they really, really like each other. So sine, the derivative will give you cosine. And these two functions are co-functions. That's another interesting part, right? So whenever you have sine and cosine, you don't really have much trouble. The only way you'll be having a little issue is to identify that this starts with co, therefore your derivative will be negative. Great. So let me just check these first two. We are done with those. And now, let's look at the tangent and the other four remaining. Well, I'm going to be taking these two together and then these two together. You can actually see why, because of their derivatives. Now, this is how it goes. Let's see tangent as... Let's see tangent and secant as um, two beans, right? Two beans that actually care for each other a lot. Now, let's see tangent as the giver, and then let's see secant as a kind of receiver, okay? Now, tangent, the derivative of tangent gives us secant squared. So you can see tangent as someone who really cares for secant, right? Such that it even has to square secant when you differentiate it. So if you take the derivative, it will even have to square the secant. So it's just like um, putting someone higher, higher than the person really is, all right? So you just exalt secant so much. It really, really ch cherishes secant that if you differentiate it, it goes ahead to square secant, all right? And the, derivative, and the derivative is positive because this doesn't start with a co. Good. Now, what happens to secant on the other end? Anyway, the derivative of secant gives us secant x together with tangent of x. So you can see secant as um, a function that will always want to be with tangent all the time, right? You don't want to leave tangent alone. You just, just want a quality time all the time, attention and stuff like that. Well, we know the, the gender that actually does that. So this is secant x, it has the derivative is the secant together with tangent, right? So tangent will square secant, while secant is together with tangent, right? So those two people will go together. Okay, now look at cotangent x and then cosecant x. If you want to look at this, their derivatives, you would see that cotangent is actually mimicking tangent while cosecant is actually mimicking the secant. And the interesting part is that this and that are co-functions, right? Though the derivative of tangent is not a co-function here, but they are actually also going together in this manner. The derivative of cotangent is, first, it's negative because of the co, right? And it goes ahead to square secant cosecant, right? This one was squaring secant. While the cotangent is, 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 the derivative gives us the square of cosecant, right? So that's just a little difference. While the derivative of cosecant, it's starting with the cosecant x and cotangent x. So the, the cosecant also wants to be with the cotangent, right? But it has a negative derivative. Cotangent as well, we always want to cherish cosecant, okay? But its own is very funny because it is negative. So it carries this cosecant and squares it. This one wants to be with the cotangent, but they both have negative sign because of their nature of the co, right? Great. So uh, having known that, just know that sine and cosine go together. Tangent and secant, they go together. Se tangent goes ahead to square secant, while secant always wants to be with tangent, just a product of the two. Uh, the cotangent and the cosecant, they also go together too. So if I ask you now, what's the derivative of cosecant x? Well, the first thing you notice is that it, it is cosecant, so it will have a negative derivative. And then um, secant, cosecant, uh, is a co-function of secant. If secant always wants to be with tangent, then cosecant will always want to be with cotangent, all right? So with that, you can get to um, understand this, um, just get the derivative of trigonometry functions, okay, anytime you are asked for it, without even having to cram, all right? Just this understanding, you can view this as a personality, view this as a personality, and get done with it. Okay, great. Um, please go ahead and 
subscribe to my channel all right i believe you like this video and it's actually helpful as well so you press the subscribe button and turn on notifications it's actually free to do that okay all right great okay thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel i've said that already